Have you ever heard a common saying, I just don't have time? It's quite common and many people say it. Maybe your friend told you, maybe that's the reason why your friend hasn't come to the TED Talks. Well, today I'm just going to be talking about that. The worldwide average life expectancy is 71.5 years, but in Spain it tends to be 83 years, but this is more for women than for men, thanks to the Mediterranean diet and the good lifestyle that we have. However, it is very important to subtract many information to this. So, for example, if you sleep the recommended eight hours of time every day, you're left with 55 years. You can also add to this the time that you spend working, that is about 13 years of your life. But this can be a curse or a blessing, because if you're working on something that you enjoy, it's fantastic. But if you're not working on something you enjoy, well, it's a bit of a curse. And you should think of doing something different. It's worth it. Then, um, if you also go through the education system between um, kindergarten to doing a two-year degree, two degree course at university, well, that all adds up to leaving you with 38 years of life left. And another one is the time after watching television or streaming platforms like YouTube, Netflix or Hulu. And that adds up to 12 years of your life gone. So, wow, it's going down really fast. <laughs> Can I just say, it's quite staggering. So, 20, 26 years left. Well, you also have the times of commute. This tends to be four years for the average person. And if you, to that, you want to add daily chores like cooking, cleaning, washing your teeth, having a shower. Well, it adds up to about 11 years, which in total leaves you with 11 years of time. Whoa, that <laughs> is quite impressive. And here comes the figure that staggered me the most. The time after smartphone use. <laughs> so the average person spends about 2 hours and 51 minutes on their phone every day. However, this average is brought down by more senior people who don't use their phone so often. But the people between the range of age of 15 to 30 years old can spend up to 15 years of their life behind a smartphone. That's bad. It is bad. It's so bad, in fact, that smartphone manufacturing companies like Apple and Samsung and many more have launched uh, screen time so you can see how much time you're actually spending on your smartphone. Another set of facts that's quite scary is that we check our phone 47 times a day and 85% of people reckon that they use their phone in front of friends and family. This shouldn't be like that. Do you know what that leads to? It leads to this. Have you ever been to a dinner table with some friends and everyone's on their phone? It's, it's sad, honestly. It's so sad that there are studies showing that millennials don't know how their parents met. I wanted to figure out that for myself. I'm like, that cannot be. So the first three students I talked to who were younger than me, and I chose three students that I knew spent a lot of time on their phone. Well, they knew how their parents met. But I came to this fourth student, and I asked the question, hey, how did your parents met? And he was blank. He had no clue. It was quite sad. So I said, OK, I'll give him another chance. I'll do a follow-up question. Um, what does your father work as? And he said, well, it's something to do with televisions, but I'm not really sure. And it's quite scary, because probably his dinner table looks like that. It's not nice. When the dinner table should look like this. And you should know how your parents met. And you should know what your father works as. Another habit that I'm guilty of myself is uh, bedtime habits. For example, well, I use my phone about half an hour before going to sleep. I watch a bit of YouTube, check if there's any Instagram notifications. And, um, well, if I'm texting to some friends, I sometimes say, okay, my limit tonight is going to be 11 p.m., okay? Then at 11 p.m., I postpone it to 12. And then at 12, I postpone it to 1. And so on, my record being 4 a.m. And you might be saying, oh my god, this is only me. But no, it's my friend, and sometimes many other friends who stay up until four in the morning. It's a problem. And, well, 80% of people check their phone one hour before going to sleep, and 35% of people five minutes before going to sleep. So it is a problem, using your phone before going to sleep. It also detriments your, your sleep. And when you wake up at night, well, what you do, you check your phone. So, nah, it's bad for your sleep. And probably the most annoying thing for me is this. Many times have I been to an airport and seen a parent give their child an iPad so that they can play Angry Birds over and over again, or so they can watch their series. And, well, it should look more like this. The kids should be playing with toys, they should be playing with their siblings, 
they should be learning how their parents met, <laughs> at least. And, well, it's not so funny when you look at this. 47% of parents think that their children are addicted to their smartphone. And 89% of them blame themselves. So, yeah, you might be thinking, what should we do? Should I just grab my phone, chuck it into the river? Should I sell it on eBay? Well, it's not that simple, and it's not that clever either. Because if you think about it, you have safety insured in your hands. If you have any problem, you can call someone up. If you need any information, you have Google. You can look it up. So here are a few amendments that I looked up. So number one, keep your smartphones away at the dinner table. There is no reason why you should be on your phone texting whilst you're with friends and family. You should be talking. Number two, turn off Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp notifications off. You do not need to respond in 0.0005 seconds to a WhatsApp. You can wait an hour. People aren't going to kill you for it. Third amendment, charge your phone anywhere, literally anywhere, but your bedside table. You probably all do it. I do it myself too. But it detriments your sleep. If you wake up, you check your phone and it's, it's not good for you. So, last amendment that I do myself is do not disturb mode. What this is, it only allows important notifications, calls and messages to come through. And the rest of them, well, they get cut off. So if you reduce the time that you spend on your phone checking notifications, the more time you have to do the things that you want to do. And the excuse of, I just don't have time, well, it can occur less. Because life is too short and you never know when it's going to end. Thank you very much.